much for taking that moment to introduce yourselves. This, this summit is all about those radical connections that we make and what we can inspire each other to do both in groups and official formal settings as well as those informal, oh, hey, you want to grab coffee after this? Or, oh, hey, let's stick around and talk in the hallway for 10 minutes. Um, so happy introductions. Um, and then the last bit of logistics is, could you please make sure that your cell phones are turned to silent or vibrate, um, just so we don't interrupt the flow of today's session. Um, and the last thing, of course, is we are recording today. Um, and so even if you have a big, bu beautiful, booming voice, it's going to be important for you to use the microphone so we can capture your brilliance for posterity. <laughs> and for funding. And for funding. <laughs> and so I'm not going to give you a big formal introduction, Catherine. I'm just going to pass the mic. Well done. Nicely passed. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would rather... Be using my big stage voice to be talking to you and using my breath to project. But um, this helps us make sure that we're recording for a variety of reasons. Um, if, I'm sure if you have uh, issues of safety or security that you uh, want to make sure that you're, uh, how you want to ask or find out about how your the video is being used, um, um, do they come to you, Jess? Would that be to come and talk to you about that? Or is this on? <laughs> yeah. So typically we um, post them on our YouTube channel and they're publicly available. Okay. Yeah. So if there's an individual in the room who would prefer to not have their uh, face um, present on those images. Uh, we could find someone to do yeah. something about yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> Just come and, speak, come and speak to me or come and speak to Jess after the session or at some point in the session and we'll make sure that we, we do our best to honour that as well. Um, because that... Uh, Technology helps uh, support future programming like this. Um, but what's really important for me, at least, is that your experience in the room uh, feels safe and secure and creative. Uh, you're not on show right now. I know you all came to the thing that was kind of called theater, um, but I'm not auditioning you. Uh, you're not auditioning for anything here. Um, <laughs> we can talk about that. But this is a room to... Um, talk about what theatre can do in lots of different contexts. So, uh, but I know that everybody might come to this room with a certain expectation or a certain feeling about what it means to perform, which we do every day anyway, right? Um, but just to uh, uh, hopefully you can just relax into 90 minutes of this and not worry too much um, about uh, how we are presenting ourselves. Today is just about truth and honesty and maybe a bit of vulnerability. Um, and it's a little tricky when there's a big shiny lens staring at you. So let's just call it out. I'm all for calling out the elephants in the room. Uh, okay, blah, 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 blah. Hi, I'm Catherine. <laughs> and I am, I use she, her pronouns, and I am presenting the workshop today. I'm not just a random person who's come in and started to talk about... <laughs> Uh, personal appearance releases. Um, I make, however, I make documentary films, so that kind of thing is uh, close and dear to my heart, but I'm a writer and director. I make theatre and film. Uh, I live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I'm originally not from New Hampshire. No. I know, I know, it's absolutely crazy, isn't it? Um, I'm originally from Scotland, moved here about 10 years ago, um, so I am an immigrant to this land, uh, the land of the Abenaki, Wabanaki and Penacooks people, past, present and future. Um, and uh, I became an American citizen in 2021. And so I get to kind of call myself a new American as well as a very proud Scot. Uh, feel free to ask me about Brexit. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but not right now. We've got other things to do. Uh, we're here <laughs> to talk about uh, talking to other people, interacting with other people, um, 
getting what we want out of other people, um, getting what we want out of ourselves. Um, you've all signed up to come to this session. Uh, we may touch on economic development, but you're probably in the wrong session if that's what you were looking for. Um, we are going to talk about the power of theatre that helps us uncover power dynamics. And it's really power dynamics that are at the heart of any interaction between people. Um, so some of the conversations at this wonderful conference so far have been about policy or about things that are so um, large, government systems, structures, uh, systemic things. We are gonna boo -boo 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 come right down to what it means for you and I, you and I, to interact when we both have wants and desires and hopes and fears. This isn't therapy. It can sound and look a little like therapy, but it's not. So if at any point you might feel some discomfort or something rise up in your belly that feels, oh, this is, this is tricky, this is touching a nerve. Discomfort's okay. Theatre can be a space for that. If, however, anything creeps up and it's dangerous for you, feel free to just step to the side. Oh, this is touching a nerve. It might be something that's in your professional life, your personal life. We're not here to dig into that stuff other than say, what does it mean if you're approaching a conversation and you get those butterflies in your stomach? How do we handle that? when we're asking for a business loan. <laughs> That's what we're talking about today. Okay, so just be really aware in your own body, discomfort, danger, discomfort, good. Let's lean into it. Ask ourselves, what do we notice? What do we feel? Danger, take a breath. There's bananas over there. <laughs> Outside is great. Um, whatever you need. And if you need more help or guidance, come and speak to me. And we can use, um, I have some strategies to help relax the nervous system and just bring us down a bit. I've talked for way too long. Okay, uh, we're going to get to know who's in the room a little bit. So Jess already did that a tiny little bit. What I'd love us to do is we're going to go around the room and I'm going to say this, if it's okay, I'm going to say that this portion won't be on mic. We'll just do this for the room because this is just for us and not recorded. Um, I'd love to give names, your pronouns, if you use them, whether it's she, um, she, her, series, he, him, they, them, or however else you want to be addressed in the room. And I'd love you to give me a verb. Now, you, I'm going to actually use this again so you can hear me. Um, you may have horrible memories of like, you know, Mrs. Hutchinson in English class beating verbs and nouns into you as I just said that there. What I want you to use is a, is a doing word, an active word to describe who you are and what you do in the world. I write. That's my main thing. I wear many hats. I do lots of different things. We all do. You could come to this room however you want to. It can be your personal life, your professional life, somewhere in the middle. I'm just gonna say, I write. So I, myself and others feel less alone. Okay, so name, pronoun, and as close to a verb if you can make it. To, if it's an adjective, that's fine. I'm not, again, I'm not Mrs. Hutchinson here to like wrap you over the knuckles with, uh, in literature class, okay? Okay, name, pronoun, and some way to describe yourself so we know who's in the room. Okay. I'm going to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like to join our circle? A few others are going to as well. We, yeah, cool. We'll like scoop round this way, if that's okay. Um, can I come to you first? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my name is Felicia, and she, her, and I like to farm and dance and write sometimes. I'm Darren, and I serve. I'm Samantha, she, her, and I also like to serve public health. 
Hi, I'm Laura Carboneau. My pronouns are she, her, and I direct, teach, organize, dance, perform. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good. Hi, I'm Vicki. My pronouns are she, her, and I teach. I'm Jeff Kirshner. My pronouns are he, him, and I connect people to build community. Hi, I'm Jenny, she, her, and I plan. I'm Holly, she, her, and I curiously connect. Tom, he, him, connect. I'm Jessica, she, her, and I nurture and educate through the arts. <laughs> I'm Lisa, she, her, and I help groups get stuff done. I'm Jules, they, them, and I energize. I'm Taryn, she, her, and I learn and share. I'm Juliana, she, her, and I weave. I like to find threads and pull them out and weave them together. Okay. Space to run the room a little bit. I'm Rod, uh, they, them, and beloved. Uh, I like to express with a concentration in dance and poetry. I'm Jim Murphy, and uh, he, him, and I'm um, yes, passionate about art, music, painting, photography, and musician. I'm Al, he, him. I talk uh, in communities and on stage. Uh, Gina, she, her, I play, organize, and connect. I'm Deb, uh, she, her, I ask deep questions, and I also dance and write. I'm Maddie, she, her, and I organize, synthesize, collaborate, and motivate. Well, this is an awesome room. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Did we manage it? A few people might sneak in, um, but I won't turn the mic over to you right now. <laughs> Come find a seat, take a breath. Uh, um, we're just getting started. Um, if you need to come and go, that might be to the restroom, that might be on to the next part of your day, feel free to do that. Um, if you're working with someone in that moment, maybe tell them you're leaving, don't just go. Um, uh, <laughs> but generally, just... Is that you a Scottish goodbye? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we'll, we'll, like, chat to everybody. We don't leave. The party doesn't end. That's, that's Scotland, Scottish. Um, you know what you need to do today, and that might also be grab a drink, have a bite to eat, go look at the sky, um, whatever you need. Uh, we only have 90 minutes uh, together, and we have 90 minutes together, right? We're going to do so much in that. We've already done so much. We've made some new friends. We've thought about the idea that, oh, I get to describe what I do, not who I am. We get to issue the label of vice president of the whatever, whatever. And uh, we get to talk about the thing that uh, fills our cup. Um, you might be somebody who likes to take notes. Um, feel free to bri bring out a notepad and a pen and take notes or on a device. Um, or you might just want to absorb the next 90 minutes. Again, you do you and whatever you need to kind of uh, be in charge of your own learning. That's probably what's key here. Um, that's rather Paolo Freire, right? Um, pedagogy of the oppressed. Uh, the idea that we are in charge of our own education and we do that by asking curious questions. It's interesting that he comes up, I didn't even think about bringing him up until just this moment because he is essentially uh, a huge important inspiration to Theatre of the Oppressed by Augusto Boal. And it is Augusto Boal, doesn't it? He just kind of looks like the kind of man you want to just give a hug. I always thought, kind of wanted to just give him a hug. Haven't, wasn't ever able to in his lifetime. Um, we're going to be focusing in on some of 
the work of Augusto Boal. So I like to talk about lineage and legacy and heritage here. We'll talk a bit more about him and this work for 90 minutes. That's what the workshop's on. Um, I'll give a bit more background into him uh, as well in just a moment. But um, his teaching in really using theatre for transformation um, was taught... Uh, to many people around the world, including an actor um, and theatre maker called Alice Bayliss, who I was fortunate enough to receive tutorage from um, in the north of England when I studied at Brighton Hall College, the University of Leeds. Um, this performer, uh, theatre maker Alice Bayliss, uh, is most well known for performances she made in clubs and nightclubs in the 1980s and 90s, uh, talking about uh, uh, drugs culture um, I, whilst it being a club or a rave. Um, and blending the two, where does theatre start and where does real life end? Um, and, and pass that teaching on to me. So that's to say that it came from Augusta Wilde through Alice to me. Important to think about the people that have taught us, I believe, um, and what we bring to the room and calling it out where that's important as well. Okay, lots of books by him, lots of things to explore. But the most important bit is that it's embodied, that we feel it in the body, we move. Hence why I'm not sitting at the front of the room and there's all the chairs are not pointed in one direction. We're in a circle. This, all the work we're going to do today is invitational. We're going to play a few games to begin with. Please do participate if you want to. Even if you don't really want to, but feel like it's the right thing to do. <laughs> Come participate. We're just going to play some games. Um, and uh, these... We'll dig into the why of everything. I'm going to keep asking you, what do you notice about this? Because my goal after 90 minutes is that you have some nuggets of something you can take back to your context. I wish we had several hours to go around and actually dig into what each and every person is doing. We don't quite have that right now. Luckily, we have the rest of our lives for that and those conversations. But today, you know... What, we're, what you're working on and what you're trying to cut, get out of this session. You know why you came. Maybe you're starting to question why you came, but you know why you came. Dig in there. And so take whatever learning you can, pull it out. And if you want to bring some of that learning into the room and say, I'm thinking about this, how this works in this context, call it out, raise your hand, shout it out. If you have a question, do it in the moment. Don't wait till the end. Because if you're like me, you'll forget. Or you'll the moment will pass and that urgency will leave so just ask ask questions we don't need to wait till the end to this for this session if you've not already guessed the session's a wee bit different from some of the other ones all right okay we're going to play a little uh warm-up game what i'd like you to do is stand up that's the first thing i invite you i invite you to stand up and I invite you to look across the room in the, into the eyes of someone else. Oh, scary eye contact. We've been inside for three years. I don't know how to do this. Look into the eyes of someone else. You may have just been rejected by someone who totally just looked at someone else and you're like, okay, it's like prom all over again. No, it's how I translated. We don't have prom. Um, look into their eyes and walk towards them. You're going to find a partner. By looking at someone, you hope you're looking at them. If not, there should be enough partners. And then find a little space together with your partner. Just a, a wee little space. <laughs> and if you've not found it, yeah, 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 great. Has everybody got a buddy? Oh, Vicky, perfect. Come be my buddy. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay. Um, First of all, say hi. Hi to your partner. Hi, hi. Feel free to check names, name tags if you want. Turn them right. I don't know about you. Mine is always facing the wrong way. Yeah. Oh, that's so smart. Okay. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to jump right into your best Tony Award winning performance. Uh, you're going to create what's called a status 
picture or status picture. And what you're going to do is one person is going to have more power than the other. Okay? Simple as that. We're just going to discover if we know what the word status means or status. I, do, I don't know which way to say it anymore. Um, uh, schedule, schedule, I, don't, I can't remember which one's not mine. Um, <laughs> maybe they're both mine. That's my own problem. Sorry. Okay. Um, you're going to create a status picture by moving your body in relation to some, the person that has now become your partner. One person's going to have more power than the other. This is one of those moments where you might feel a little something in your body. Oh, I don't like being low status. Oh, I do. Just notice it. If it feels like discomfort, good. Feels like danger, stop. Okay. Um, don't overthink this. My explanation is taking longer than the game should really take. A uh, few quick rules. If you're going to be touched or you're going to touch someone, ask for consent. Vicky, I'd like to put my hand on your shoulder. Is that okay? I asked clearly for, and really specifically received consent. I can do it. That does not now mean that I can run my hands through Vicky's lovely hair. <laughs> consent is specific and it can be taken away at any point. If Vicky was to say that you don't want me to touch your shoulder anymore, can you say that? I stop. That's consent, okay? So the pictures can be in contact with one another in some way, but they don't have to be. We could also interact showing status without touching one another. We could keep a bubble between us. Again, you do you. All right, quick status picture. You have 30 seconds to do it. All right, on you go. Ten seconds. And quick rehearsal, practice your pose. Excellent. And actors neutral. Lovely. Okay, great. That's not actor neutral. That's something else. We just we said <laughs> T-Rex. <laughs> T-Rex actors neutral. Um, okay. Um, everybody in the room. After three, we're all just going to do our status picture, okay? Did I say after three? I did. I've got to count up. Okay. One, two, three. Status picture. Nice. And, and relax. That Tony is in the mail. <laughs> all right. I'm going to split us down the room. I'm going to come this way. There's like an imaginary line here. And magically, we have become an audience. Oh, we have become performers. Oh, and oh, <clears throat> should have warmed up. Okay, and after three, we are going to watch. We're going to observe. We're going to analyze. We're not going to judge. We're going to use the word analyze here. But first of all, you're just going to look. What do you notice? That's our role in this. That's what the audience has to do. You just notice. Here are wonderful performers. I'm going to count to three. You're going to just do your status pose again. All clear? One, two, three. If you can all just hold that pose for a little bit longer. Lovely, right? Uh, what? <laughs> You're going to hold it. If you need to shake it out and come back in, please feel free. Yeah, because some, some people are doing their quads. Um, uh, what do we notice? What, does anybody want to pull out something they notice? I'll bring the mic over to you. Uh, different levels. Different levels, great. So we're not yet really analysing, we're just describing. What do we notice? What do we see? Yeah. Um, a lack of con eye contact. Different levels, lack of eye contact. Anything else we notice? Gesture. Can you see a flip of A hand gesture is... Yeah. Yes. Hands are involved. And are they dynamic? Uh, right now they're static because they're not moving, but there, here's some dynamic. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> There's some dynamism. Yeah, love it. All right. Uh, unfreeze. Let's give them a big round of applause. Now we're going to swap. We're going to be audience. Uh, 
we're going to do our poses. And Jess, I'm going to have you be me. Uh, so just ask us what we notice. All right. All right, and into your poses on three. One, two, three. Taking everybody in. All right. This side, audience, what are you noticing? Jules. Do you want me to talk into the mic? I don't know if that's... Okay, hi. Um, I noticed that some people had a similar idea to me, which is that the arms folded position can be very, very powerful looking. Eyebrow action. <laughs> uh, looking down in a couple of cases while the other person is looking over their head or in a commanding way. Yeah, absolutely. Any other observations, similarities? The, uh, the arms crossed, some arms open, but all of them kind of symbolize status. Yeah. Some are equal status. Oh, some are equal status. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of similar poses in a couple of couples that are slightly different. It almost looks to me like this dyad is negotiating their status in some way. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely observation. Do you guys want to say anything else about what you're seeing? All right, and everyone can relax. <laughs> yeah, I, thank you very much. Let's give everybody a big round of applause. <laughs> Rod, can I come have you, you just over here for a moment? And Deborah, can you join this group? And we're going to be one big audience because we've got two volunteers over here. Who um, <laughs> would you mind? You were not; they, they were not partners. Would you mind doing the stances that you did with your other partners? Just whenever you're ready, you can get into that position. What do we notice about these? What do we see? It feels very against each other. Mm -hmm. And what do we notice if you remember who their partners were and what status was in their previous images to here? Does anyone remember? Yeah. So you were Vicky's partner, and it seemed like you were the one in, in power there um, with Rod and their partner. I'm sorry, Deborah. Um, I kind of had a hard time knowing it looked your poses were very like kind of equal. So, but in this situation, um, to me, Rod's pose reads as more dominant than Vicky's. And in some ways it's the same gesture, right? Their arms are crossed. Thank you, you may relax and we can give them a big round of applause. This activity, thinking about status and power, is um, important for many reasons. Um, one, it got us all up on our feet and moving and interacting, but it's often important to think not necessarily about what that position is, because we just saw there that there are ex almost exactly the same gesture, the same way of being, being able to be translated, described, analyzed, seen as something a little different. We, and because each of our own contexts or maybe the angle at which you were looking at it changes the situation. If we had come behind them or I'd asked them to turn around and we were seeing them from the back, what might have changed about the way we read the situation, okay? I just want you to be really aware of that idea of uh, what happens to us when we are viewing other people in some kind of status or power position, okay? Uh, let's find our seats again for just a moment. Thank you, thank you. Please feel free to just come and join us. There is some space in the circle for sure. 
We're just getting introduced. I'll let you come sit in. <laughs> and I'm just really, um, we had done, I believe, our introduction circle before you had joined. Now we have someone else as well. Um, we went around the room, we introduced our name, our pronouns, and a verb, a way to describe what we do as opposed to who we are. Um, and I would invite you both now if you'd like to do that. So um, is there anybody who wants to share an example of what theirs were? Because there was lots of like magic in the room. Yeah, Taryn, do you want to? Uh, Taryn, she, her, I learn and share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Rebecca Levy and um, she, her, hers, me. I like to throw in me. Um, uh, um, assist and serve. Oh, sorry. I just gave it to you. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, and there's one right there. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm Chanel Barber. Uh, she, her, hers, and fund. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone just went, wonderful. <laughs> Oh, let me know. We're just going to... No. Um, what a lot of pressure. Thank you. <laughs> um, and feel free to send the mic back around there. We can rest it on the chair or you can hold on to it, whatever. Um, we're recording the sessions. The mic are, is in order to catch that for the recording as well as assist with listening. Yes. Yes. I just want to let everyone know we've just had some sandwiches delivered. <laughs> so if you would like to stay and chat after the session, you're welcome to grab a sandwich or half a sandwich and do so. Yeah. I know I was a little sneaky earlier. I like to do this. I said we only had 90 minutes with each other, but we also know that we have lunch and I'll be sticking around if you want to chat more. Um, or I'll sit here alone with all the sandwiches. Uh, okay. So we've just warmed up our body um, and our mind and the theater work already began. So it wasn't really just a warm up. We were doing lots of stuff. Um, I'd love to just dig in for a moment into what might be bubbling up for you with what we just did. If you can take that power or status exercise and think about your context, what you're bringing to this conference, why you're here, who you're working with. This session was described as, uh, are you launching a new project or initiative? And do you want to gain community engagement and, and problem solving and talk to people? I'd love to hear one or two examples of what's, what someone's thinking about, their context, and where you think status and power plays into that. Is there anybody who'd like to share? Yeah, jump right in. So in our scenario, um, thank you. Jenny, you put on glasses. <laughs> She, um, she was the one speaking and I was receiving the information and as we were sitting there posed I kept thinking is it really the one speaking who has power right like in some senses it is but in some senses it's not um, both sides have power for for different reasons um, I think that definitely people who have a stage you know I've been on the stage many times <laughs> this summit um, there is a certain sense of of responsibility and, um, you know, control of a situation that you have at that point. But then there's also a lot of power in the people receiving that information and what they do with that, whether they choose to stay and listen or not. Um, so I've just been kind of bouncing around that idea. I'm not sure what to do with it. All right. Is there anyone? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go. In my small town, we are trying to do things around climate change and solar projects. Uh, it's always a divisive conversation, even though the solar projects always win at town meeting. Um, so there's a silent majority, but there's also a vocal minority against the projects. And we're, we want to talk creatively and get to a solution that everyone supports. Interesting. 
Are, is that typically um, in a, like a town hall setting where that comes out? Where does, where as, does that come As you know, New happen? Hampshire has town meeting. Yeah. Not everybody may know that, but we have, especially in small towns, it's a very democratic process. Once a year, town meeting. My town's 700 people, usually about 200 come to town meeting, and it's a deliberative body. Every citizen has a vote, and we're voting on budget articles. Um, how is the town going to spend money? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for more of that. Let's hold on to the idea of a town hall meeting, town meeting for later. Is there anyone else who'd like to discuss what they are thinking about in terms of the people they are having interact with or the context that they are in? Yeah. Um, oh. <clears throat> so I guess that uh, my organization as the right quote unquote gatekeeper of funding or uh, um, you know booking performances or so on and so forth, how I hold myself in the community to make sure that we are being perceived as open as and accessible, which is what I hope people understand us to be, so that when people are coming to us. Um, to make sure that I and my organization are being read as being helpful rather than being closed and people are nervous to um, approach us. Nice. Yeah. It seems intentional to write the words that people are experiencing issues or anyone else would like to speak about their context with that in mind. Yeah. I think... Um, a piece of what we're doing this past summer, we did strategic planning and I worked with a consultant that was like, I hate the word empower, it doesn't mean anything. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, there is, this, there is this sense of, I hold power as a leader of this organization with the funding access and the connections to funders and resources. And, and what I wanna do is I wanna give that power to the folks that I'm serving. So. Yeah, I'm navigating my relationship with the word empower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Augusta Boal uh, was, passed away in the early 2000s, um, a Brazilian theater maker um, and activist. Um, who is familiar with his work in the room already? Lovely, good. Great, excellent. Um, and so feel free to jump in with your knowledge and, and add to the room at the same time. Um, he became a, a legislator. He became a, a, a politician in himself later on. Um, but he was touring work around Brazil uh, in the 1960s um, under great p political tension um, as well as violence. And he was in the spirit of political drama of the 50s and 60s that was happening all around the world, um, was bringing a kind of uh, message play to, to the people, um, to the people in rural communities, urban communities all over. Um, and these plays had uh, a point to prove. They were saying, this is what you need to do. He was in one such community, a rel relatively poor, impoverished community. And the piece was about um, individuals in that community rising up, taking arms, and uh, against the uh, oppressive um, political figures in that community. And the, uh, the crowd, the audience, was so enraptured by the performance and so uh, brought alive by it, they were like, yes! And they said to the actors, bring your guns and come with us and we shall bring, take down the, the, the oppressive powers. And the actors had to turn around and say, our, our guns are fake. Our guns are plastic. Um, they are not real. They, they can't harm anyone. And in that moment, Boal realized that he was uh, effectively asking people to do what he and his company weren't willing to do. 
And that's when he started to form an, the idea of theatre of the oppressed, forum theatre, which is what we're going to dig into a bit more today, various forms of theatre, legislative theatre, um, that, uh, and then he has further writings on something called the Rainbow of Desire. I can give you a full bibliography um, over sandwiches. Um, but uh, essentially what he realized um, was that he was going to people with a huge amount of power and instead of empowering them, which is what he thought he was doing by teaching them the way to do it, he was taking away all their power because he was further showing how um, separate he was and being asking someone to do something that you think is right is not the same as asking someone what did they want to do? What did they feel is right in that moment? And that was the shift. So his forms of theatre moved away from ever trying to present a single, a single idea solution and instead saying, together we will find a solution by showing status, power, and where the oppression truly is, digging into where that tension is. And I invite you to think about the context that you're in and thinking we might kind of understand some of the power dynamics, but if we dig a little bit deeper, what's really going on? And we're going to talk about a few ways to do that. Um, I will dig a little bit more into forum theatre as well, but just that idea that he is not taking something to the masses, um, some idea or knowledge, but really empowering them to, to find the solutions for themselves. Um, all right. How comfortable are we with conflict? <laughs> I'm hearing not very big shakes of head. Anybody in here who's like, I love it. Give me a good fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I'm a fan of conflict to uh, really bring out what people really are thinking uh, and bring conflict towards positive change, meaning people spend so much time bottling in what they are conflicted by but aren't afraid to express that conflict, and they run or it comes out in kind of inappropriate ways where if we just talk and have conflict and know that it's going to end with resolution, it's the best possible way you can do things. That's coming from a man who's been married for 40 years. So <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I never win that conflict. I'm just kidding. No, uh, <clears throat> no but seriously, I, I just think organizationally, especially, you know, even in community, I'm a firefighter in my town. Um, I don't know if any of you ever volunteered to be a firefighter, but it's wrought with conflict, you know, and you've got to bring it out. Otherwise, it just lays there like a muddy puddle. Yeah. Both. <laughs> Double fist in it here. Um, I, oh, you know, I wish I had like an hour to talk about this, but I'm going to wrap it up real quick. Um, so I grew up in a conflict riddled home. I hope certain people aren't watching this. <laughs> and I was the one who could always figure out a way through. So I had six sisters and two brothers, and they would come to me and ask and say, Juliana, we need to ask about this thing for this reason. When should we do it? How should we do it? And it was always like a puzzle to me. I was like, okay, if you do it at this time and you approach it in this way and you say these things and your body looks like this when you say it, and to that level of specificity. And so to me, it always feels like a puzzle. Um, I represented... Uh, taxpayers with problems, uh, tax problems with the IRS and states and um, local departments of revenue. And it was so much fun and such a joy when they would call angry, you know, that, that their case was still going, it hadn't been resolved, to find that thread, like I talked about threads before, and find that w a way to pull out that thread and put myself on the side with them and say, that is really frustrating. I can't imagine what that feels like. And just starting to put myself on their side. And it, yeah, I don't know how to explain it other than it's like a puzzle. And it's 
it's enjoyable for me, not in like a weird way, but like in a, it brings me joy to help people regulate and help people find solutions and get to the other side of it. Awesome. Yeah. Is it Tom? Is that? Yeah. Thank you, Julian. You inspired me to think about how, um, I think I have a, an assumption that the word conflict uh, presumes a winner and a loser. It seems very, um, and even if there's a compromise, it seems as if somebody is compromising and somebody has higher status, perhaps. And I, it made me think about uh, a, a reframe um, that uh, in times when I've had to, um, been involved in facilitating or participating in a way that using the phrase creative tension as opposed to conflict um, uh, presents a, an opportunity for uh, a resolution that is a, uh, that w in which uh, everyone benefits as opposed to uh, a winner take all. Yeah, lovely. I have a gift. <laughs> when it comes to conflict. And you know, people will say to me, do you like conflict? You, know, you step right up to it. I'm like, no, I hate it. But I can't stand it when people won't say the thing that everyone's thinking. And so I have often joked that I'm going to open a business and I'm going to make millions of dollars. It's going to be called Maddie the Mouthpiece. And I'm going to say that thing that everyone knows and wants to say, but they're afraid to say. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a meeting and I finally say something and everyone goes, oh. and then after the meeting, they all come up and say, I've wanted to say that for like five years. <laughs> I'm like, why don't you? <laughs> Lovely. I am hearing uh, the muddy and the murkiness of this, that things have to get a little dirty, a little uh, not too shiny in order to deal with some of this conflict stuff. I'm loving hearing about the problem solving and the figuring out, you used a phrase that was about like getting at what's underneath the thing, but that sometimes we've got to feel the top thing to get at the underneath thing as opposed to not letting the top thing be felt. We've kind of got nowhere to go. And then also this idea of what does compromise look like, but that also that we can, uh, doesn't have to be so all or nothing, our thinking. And, and yeah, I've wanted to say that for all this time and I somehow I was given permission but that there was something to be said in a moment that felt like two rocks hitting each other. It took someone to kind of poke, either poke at it or pull at it. All right, we're gonna play a little conflict game. Um, so this is about to get really contentious. Um, okay, we are going to play the conflict spectrum and we're gonna be making a line from these lovely shoes, although they won't stay there, so just imagine the spot, uh, all the way down here. I'm going to ask this first time around whether you're a cat person or a dog person, and imagine the line between the two is a spectrum, so you may find yourself equally in the middle. You love all furry four-legged things cat people and find yourself somewhere on the spectrum all the way down we'll see how long the line gets there's quite a lot of us to dog person okay you choose your spot on this imaginary line yeah F find your place and I'll ask you about it just physical representation of emotion that's what we're doing here and you may need to shuffle as you. Feel free to go all the way down to the door if we need to. This is, there'll be some negotiation happening here. You may need to turn to the person next to you and ask where they're at. I would like you to be, yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need to share that. Do you want to share with the room? <laughs> oh, I guess. Yeah. I'm sharing that I actually hate birds. So oh, if that was something so different, know. I would be gone. <laughs> There was just a burning desire to share that with the room. A hate of birds over here from Laura. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, uh, a few things. What did we notice? What does this activity make you do? What did you just have to do? Communicate. With yourself, other people, both? Both, and negotiate. Yeah. Oh my goodness, no, same, ditto. Yeah. Anything else? What else did we notice? What did it make you do? Clarify. Ooh, clarify. Uh, what? Uh, in the middle, but leaning towards dog. Yeah. So you're really and clarifying for you. To see where so I am in the, the center line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Level zero. Yeah. And which I would say, I appreciate earlier as a true cat person that you said down the line to dogs, but there's actually more dog lovers than cat lovers. Uh, and you're going to fight. No. <laughs> But, but here at the end, with the serious cat lovers, and we're right, by the way, <laughs> we only had to communicate with each other. Like, which of us is more of a cat lover? We did not have to deal with the dog lovers at all. I love this activity so much. I really want you to start thinking about where you can use this in your home, with your loved ones, in your professional context too, blah, 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 blah. But um, yeah, did we hear that? So it's made us do, I'm gonna to come to you. It's polarizing. Mm -hmm. But what I believe is maybe, maybe now, well this actually, this end, the cat people seem kind of violent. Um, <laughs> but the... <laughs> 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 Not Tom, sorry. I did just I did just put that all on Discord, but anyway. No. Um Yes, it is polarizing because you you're having to make a choice. You're having to make a choice. You're having to state your thing. Right? You're having to state it. And that's some of what we were getting at, where some people are like, I love it when we can finally say the thing that we wanted to say. But having to clarify that, being in a position to do that can feel really vulnerable. But sometimes an activity like this can be a little lighter than when we're sitting opposite a conference table. Also because we've got up and we've used our body, we had to not just be in this part of our thinking, we gotta, we gotta use our entire body. It's kind of some of the magic as well of it. Okay, We've embodied thinking by doing an activity like this. Um, and I could break you up and be like, okay, here, what are the debates on this end? What are the debates on that end? We could get into deliberative talk. I don't think we will today. I don't think we'll have time to. But I want you just to feel what it felt like to have to stand for something. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Uh, it's not gonna be birds. We know how Laura <laughs> feels about birds. <laughs> um, We'll see. We'll see what this one will do. <laughs> Tea, coffee. Do you need a cup of tea right now? And Jess just magically makes them. Or is it coffee? <laughs> and really notice, notice what you're doing. Notice what other people are doing. <laughs> all exactly the middle. Okay, okay, you, you guys want to be the middle, okay, okay. Yeah. That's the necessity. That's Lovely. Okay. I'm going, I'm going to ask, well, I, here's one thing I noticed. You're talking even more. It's good. Uh, right, I'm going to pull that out for you already. Took me longer to grab your attention again the second time we did it, right? With rehearsal, using the theater words now, with rehearsal, with practice, a practice deepens. Do this a lot with a team and you get, you get deeper, you get to crunchier things, you get to, you get to do it with harder problems. 
we're not going to get to really hard problems right now, but in your own context, think about what would be the most taboo subject you could bring up in your office, field, uh, fire truck, whatever, wherever you need to be wanting to create change, create connection with people, engage, hear their views. What's the most divisive? Could this activity, could you get there eventually doing this kind of thing? Um, I want to hear some people's opinions on liquids. Uh, is there any of the, the coffee people wanting to really make a stand? Why did you find yourself over here? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Yeah. <laughs> I really don't like cat drinking. Uh, cat people all drink tea. Because <laughs> it seems to be the same people. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that though. We were like, we start to be like, okay, there's. A, I never want to speak to that person in the room. Like that's not the message of the game, Jim. <laughs> oh sure. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Neither wasn't an option in the animal category, which is fine because now that I have a cat, I do love him. Um, so that's why I was over there. But I also love coffee. So you boxed me in. <laughs> and I bust it out. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm going to come. I like my coffee with cream. <laughs> so I'm not at the end. I love it. Now we're getting more nuance. That's what we're talking about. Variation, nuance. We're finding more detail that wasn't even asked of someone. What kind of settings can you think of that you want to create space for the possibility that you as the facilitator haven't even thought of? That's real empowerment because we're here to give, lob something up in the air and then you hope that someone else runs with it. That was a bit of a mixed mess. You can tell I don't play sport. Uh, yeah, Jules. It's like volleyball. Um, I, so something that, that always comes up for me with activities like this, um, and like I'm, I, I have no problem sharing, I'm autistic, and so I tend to think uh, very literally about things and also like vague prompts like this leave me with more questions like for example coffee or tea okay are we talking about what i think tastes better are we talking about what i find more utilitarian in terms of getting caffeine into my body are we talking about um what i want to like go out and drink are we talking about what i want to drink at home like there's so many <laughs> other other things and so i think like i mean i'm sure that's part of the point of like this activity is to like bring up more of those questions. Um, but like, I think so often in when we have discussions about like this or that in our workplaces or whatever, we often don't leave enough time to like discuss those nuances and we like rush into decision-making without considering all of those things. And so, yeah. I feel it whole I do. <laughs> and that's why surveys are horrible. Yeah. <laughs> And then we're into the spectrum that we like tea in the morning, or I mean, coffee in the morning, but tea later in the day, maybe. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you want to say something? Not that anything that Jules reflected the current you know, political state of our country at all, but <laughs> those of us in the middle who are talking about and reasoning out that, you know, we like coffee in the morning, but we love a cup of tea in the afternoon, but it's like a dog and a cat. I have three dogs, I've had cats, and I met a cat two weeks ago that I really liked a lot. So, you know, I can have different opinions about different things. I can be in the middle. It's okay. All right, so much good stuff here. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for bringing that into the room, the idea of neurodivergence, that we, we do not all think alike. We do not all process at the same speed. We, uh, and, and, and there's so many springboards if we take into account all the different ways someone is accessing a question or thinking about a question. Any one of you maybe came up with a few more questions that needed asked or clarification. We thought we were asking this question and now we've got to ask, oh, this is actually the question we're asking, you know, because we actually only need to know about the morning drink. We don't need to know about the afternoon drink right now because our funding is only concerned with the morning drink, you know, or... <laughs> Ex that is, <laughs> or the timeline we set for ourselves or the strategic goals or whatever it is helps us drill down, absolutely. Middle is really interesting as well for me because I think exactly what you're saying, Al, that there is uh, the opportunity to be in the, in the middle. Um, 
it's even set up as a spectrum, but there's the opportunity to be here to not really know or to need to know more. And we can talk about our comfort. Are you comfortable there? That's another way to take this game even further. Are you comfortable where you are? Would you like to be somewhere else on this spectrum? Is another great question to ask participants. Would you like to be somewhere else? Um, I'm going to just say it again, you guys have just like made a piece of theater. You just did it. Like th this is theater for me. It does not have to be behind a big red curtain. Um, we don't have to be wearing spangly outfits. Uh, <laughs> It's more fun if we do, but I couldn't bring them all in the truck. Anyway, um, that all we're digging at is human interaction. Theatre exists because of tension, and from that tension, something changes. Anything we want to think about, okay? Any story that we have in mind. Humpty Dumpty. Where is this wonderful work of literature set? Humpty Dumpty sat on a... He sat on a wall. And then what's the great conflict of Humpty Dumpty? He had a great fall. Oh dear Lord, he's cracked wide open. Who comes to save the day? And all the king's men. Uh-oh, denouement. What happens? It's not a comedy, it's a tragedy. That is it. It's as simple as that. There was a protagonist, an egg. It was set in a place, it happened in a place. These are the things that are fundamental to story, to theater, and hey, guess what? To life, because theater is just a mirror to life. So you always wanna be asking, what's the context? Where are we? Who are the people involved and what is happening to them? What's the tension? Now, the great piece of literature doesn't go into how Humpty Dumpty felt about his situation, their situation, perhaps. Maybe I shouldn't gender them. And we don't hear whether the king's horses and the king's men secretly had a plot to never save Humpty Dumpty because actually Humpty Dumpty was going to usurp the king. Maybe Humpty Dumpty worked for the queen. I don't know. But we could dig into any of that. But anyway, there was conflict. And from that, some kind of resolution. You've kind of just done the same as well. I gave you some moment to be in conflict with yourself. Do I want tea? Do I want coffee? Do I like cats? Do I like dogs? You had to place yourself somewhere. And then I don't know what your resolution is. Maybe you are totally like, yeah, lifelong coffee drinker. I'm going to actually go and learn how to be a coffee farmer. And that's your future. Or something else will have changed in you from this activity. So that's why I class this activity as theatre because it's just people in a place dealing with some kind of conflict that they have to resolve, all right? So again, your Tony is in the mail. Uh, let's grab a seat again. And a, go and a drink of water if you need one. Hi, welcome, feel free to come slowly into our circle if you'd like to. Would you like to introduce yourself to the room as well? Okay. Yeah, is that okay? We have more visitors, uh, more um, attendees, uh, people, I don't know. Well, you, you can, <laughs> I don't mean to label you. Hi, I'm Catherine. Uh, I'm somewhat leading this session. Uh, we introduced ourselves already. We won't go around everybody, but just so we've got a sense of something. We introduced ourselves with our names, our first names pronouns that we would like to use if that feels appropriate to you and then I asked a verb what do you do as opposed to what you are uh, is there somebody who'd like to share the example that they said earlier or maybe you've even been noodling on your verb since we came in and you'd like to say something else yeah Rob. Oh, um, Jim can you pass that I'm Rod uh, they them and beloved uh, express with a concentration in poetry and dance <laughs> So he expresses, yeah. That was too good. <laughs> <laughs> they were all as good that? as that, actually. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm Carrie. I also use they, them pronouns. And uh, gardening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 
And I'm Lori, she, her, and who? Garden Sports Arts. Ooh, lovely. Yeah, yeah. I art. Okay. Um, how are we feeling? Let's check in. What's noodling in our brains? Are we getting close to lunch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is there anybody who wants to share what they're thinking? Yeah. Um, I just want to say, because I work a lot with groups, that definitely I'm thinking about how to apply this. And, and, the, and then just the impact. And there's something about moving with the embodiment. Moving the body, not just sitting and taking it in and just using this and this. This comes in. Big time, big time. So that's great. Oh, sorry. Well, you asked about conflict uh, and, and then resolution. And then in theater, you know, without conflict and resolution and release. Um, and to me, that's, you know, you're... you're underscoring what you know what, what I think about when groups and communities work together when you're talking about solar when you're talking about things there is tension there's conflicts conflict there is release and Tom left but you know sometimes it's viewed as there's winners and losers but I think it takes a lot longer in life to figure that out but this is really interesting and I'm really evaluating my, my whole cat thing so thanks a lot appreciate that <laughs> Um, so two things. One is that I think when we pay attention, our bodies kind of know what to do sometimes. So it's known in the office that if I'm doing my best work, I'm humming. And so it's, I try to hum quietly, but it's like, and I learned, I read an article one time about how like vibrations in your jaw can help like thought go through or something. And so it was like, made me feel validated, but I already knew that. Um, and so I think paying attention is important because we oftentimes are so disconnected from our bodies. And the second thing is that Jules and I have both been a part of New Leaders Council before. We were in different cohorts, but they do an exercise where it's like a grid and you have to place yourself and maybe you can help me remember, but there was, it's been a while for you. Oh, it's like, um, there's one that's like passion, it's like, like purpose. It's like one is passion and one is what you're actually doing or something. So you care about something, but are you actually doing it in your life or working on it? And when you had to place yourself on that, it, rather than just you're typing or you're filling something out online, it's just kind of bouncing around and it's very noncommittal. When you have to place your body somewhere, you realize like, wow, and I do care so much about this thing, but I'm not doing anything about it. Or I don't care that much about this thing, but I'm spending all my time on it. And where is the balance? And it forces you to place yourself in these different places. And that was a really impactful exercise for a lot of us to kind of evaluate uh, how we're spending our time and whether we're aligned with how we want to be spending our time and whether it's in balance. Also, I think that as far as I'm concerned, I'm always having this conversation in my own mind, you know, that sometimes you have those days where this negative person is in it. Oh, I should say all the time at certain times, you know, that you're arguing and you say, OK, no, this is not the time to be, you know, and you have to you have to take different positions in your own mind. And it's, 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 it's very similar to with the conversations you have with other people. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, something I was thinking about was like the complexity of the middle, um, because I feel like depending on context, like oftentimes the middle gets framed as a place of inaction where it's like you're noncommittal. You don't really you, you're not willing to kind of stake your flag <laughs> for for either side. But I, then I think a, a part that often gets overlooked and what I notice a lot in my work is that people are in the middle because they feel like they don't know enough about either side of the spectrum to lean one way or the other. Um, and I just think that's really interesting to think about in terms of like, I don't know, trying to inspire people or organizations to action is like, 
making sure, uh, evaluating kind of where they're starting from and not making assumptions about why they are or are not doing something. Um, can I chime in since I was in the middle for both? Yeah, I was, ju I was just about to ask the question. Is there someone who was in the middle who'd like to share why they were in the middle? Um, it, it was definitely not a lack of decision or inaction or not having enough information. Um, usually I have too much information and I, in the middle, because I see multiple sides to things and um, I'm also neurodivergent, um, ADHD, dyslexia, other mental disorders. Yay! So maybe that's why I'm in the middle too, but it um, it helps me to see multiple perspectives of other people too. So I, I live in gray area. I don't like it, but I do. Mm. Yeah, and that's and you're bringing up another key point. What assumptions are you making in any given moment about how you are feeling, or how you should be feeling, or about someone else in that moment? What's the uh, most powerful thing to do when you notice an assumption, either that you have made of yourself, of someone else, or if an assumption is being made in a room. Does anyone have something that they do? Climb down off of the assumption ladder. <laughs> I've been to too many leadership trainings. <laughs> and, and, and what comes next? So that's something that you're seeing that you're like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, Recognize it. Recognize this. Step back from that. I'd encourage you to ask a question. That's what comes as a director in the room with actors. I see them intuitively move towards something, right? Like the lines are on the page. They know what they've got to say. And they're, they're not sure whether to take the step or not or whatever. And, or but they, and they choose something and go with it. But I, we can tell there's not truthfulness there. There's something that doesn't feel right. My job as the director is to say, tell me more about what you're experiencing. Or something like, did you notice what you just did there? More often than not, the, an actor, a, this is someone highly trained in self-awareness, is like, no, did I do something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. I'm, I'm going to draw that out for you. I'm going to say what that was and... And then we talk about why, it, what, what was going on there. Ask a question. Tell me more about that is a really, really good one. You've heard me ask it a few times today. Tell me more about that. What's going on for you? Another great one. What's going on in the body? Are you feeling something in your stomach, in your shoulders? And it was brought up just momentarily. Our bodies know what we're, what's, what's going on. They know it's real. We most likely feel the tension somewhere else in our body before we are cognizant of it. So be aware of that and then, and then address it. Ask that question. Yeah. Um, I was in the middle as well. And I, I think that to what you were saying, the, I'm an educator in schools for mostly fourth and fifth grade because I like to get them young. Um, and what I notice is that it's an experience thing. You have to remember that not everybody has all the experience. Some people's lives end at the end of their city block, or they may have not been, been introduced to these ideas before. They may not speak English, you know? And so you have to, I, what I try to remember is when people, especially in fourth and fifth grade, the boys are very loud and they raise their hands even if they don't know the answer to the question. <laughs> Um, so I have to be very mindful of who is engaging and who is not and how I might be able to engage them. I think you were saying a lot of the same things. Oh, yeah, another thought there? I really try not to talk too much. I'm sorry. Um, you were a participant in this circle. It's lovely to have you. <laughs> um, so two of the things that I really like to remind my kids are that, one, you're always looking at things through your own lens and so is everyone else. So along with assumptions, almost all the time is projecting. And so for, I gave my daughter recently an example who is feeling very self-conscious about something um, with her friends at school. And she said, they're all looking at me. They're thinking about this. They're saying, they're talking to each other about me. 
And I said, I'm going to give you an example. I said, maybe you're out on the soccer field and you're playing soccer and you look across the field and someone's looking at you with a funny look. And you think, they're thinking about me for these reasons. What if they're over there just thinking, I really have to poop? (laughs) And that's what's in their mind. And they just happen to accidentally look at you when they thought about having to poop. (laughs) Like, and it just like blew her mind, you know? (laughs) And so I just constantly remind like, projecting, 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 and ask questions if you're not sure. Did you realize you were looking at me? Is there anything you want to talk to me about? Or, you know, and then the other thing is that gray is good, in my opinion. So if my kids ever say something that's absolute black and white, I say, can you think of a situation where that's not true? And then we start to think about that. And no one is all good or all bad. There's no bad guys or good guys. And so we talk a lot about that too. So I, li- I love the question asking. All right. We have a few, about 10 minutes left before I'll let you eat a sandwich because I, I like control. No, you can eat a sandwich. <laughs> um, I think we can make another piece of theater in 10 minutes. All right. Uh, we've had a couple of contexts brought up. One was a town meeting with climate-related subject matter. Um, And then I know, Deborah, you said you were starting to think about your own context too and where you're going to take things. We're going to need like a quick vote. Um, Maybe, do you want to describe, what's your context? Can you describe it as briefly as like, it's like a town hall meeting? Absolutely, absolutely. So this uh, one that I'm working with right now is a special school um, in the state of New Hampshire. And uh, we have a staff who are very burnt out. And this is a residential school, so you've got all different kinds of departments. Everybody's in a silo. And what we found is we're trying to get to some solutions, but they're not ready. They're not ready. Everybody's feeling different things about where we want to go as a group. So the setting is? Um, Residential school for boys. We want to connect more. This is them speaking. We don't really know how. We don't necessarily feel like we're there yet. We're still pissed off. Um, We want to, we want to, I'm sorry, connect each other, better communication across within the school. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Spectrum game again. Is it Laura? Lisa. So sorry. So sorry. Um, Lisa, uh, If you'd like to delve into a town hall meeting with uh, climate change as a subject, head over to Lisa. If you'd like to be in a context of residential schools, you're going to be there for about five minutes. Again, lunch is coming. Uh, Residential schools, uh, kind of colleagues, well, the the whole environment actually connecting better. Head on over there if you're in a town hall meeting. Head on over towards Deborah. We're going to have a little vote here with our bodies. So Lisa and Deborah, stay where you are. You can't go to each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's overwhelming. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, right. (laughs) Okay. Love it. Uh, Tom did have to leave, but this is a moment where you both win. (laughs) Okay. We have team one. Team one also, why did I number it? I don't know. Uh, You can come up with your own theatrical company name. Okay, very similar to the game we played at the beginning, the power status. There's a few more people in the room, so you know, I'm giving you no time to do this and you've got even more people with even more opinions. This is the worst time, the worst way to do community engagement. I'm proving it now. Uh, You're going to interact, you're going to create a giant status picture. For the individuals who were not in the room earlier, you've got plenty of other people who have just got a wealth of knowledge and they can share with you what the heck a status picture is if you don't know. And also it was 90 minutes ago, they might not remember. Uh, You're going to create a picture. But this time around, you've kind of got two directors. You've got Deborah, you've got Lisa. They know a little bit more about the context. I'm going to ask you guys to be the kind of outside eye, the kind of director. You're just going to set up a picture. Town hall meeting. Who's for? Who's against? Who are the people in the room? residential school, whatever that ends up being, like a team meeting or are the students involved? Who needs to be there? 
We need to know setting. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. He sat on a wall. We need to know setting. We need to know who. We need to know Humpty Dumpty, kings, king me, king's men, horses, okay, for your own context. Where are we? Who's there? And some kind of gesture that's showing status and maybe feeling towards the situation, okay? That's a whole ton of explanation. You've got about three minutes to pick, make this picture. Yes, Rod. The director makes the gesture? They'll help guide the situation. No, you're an autonomous actor here as well. Let's think of this as devising. You're not being given your role. You can really bring yourself to your role. Um, okay? The outside eye is just there to help us work a little quicker and to provide a bit more context. Okay. I totally have faith in you. Go. You've probably used a third of your time, one third of your time. That's a good amount of discussion. Let's get our bodies involved. Let's start building. It's okay, yeah, yeah, great. All right, let's make this picture. You've got about one minute left. Go with your gut feeling. <laughs> nice. I encourage you to think about levels, high, low, medium. Okay, 30 seconds. Looks like you guys are like good. Yeah. Got about 10 seconds. All right. Nice. All right. Uh, let's freeze. Let's see these pictures. Freeze in the picture. Okay. Remember where you're at. Remember what it's like. Um, town hall meeting. I'm going to ask you to relax. You're going to become our audience. This feels like a rather immersive piece of theatre. Uh, so come and come and experience it in the round. Is that right? Can we come and gather around you? Okay. So what do we notice? What do we notice? Uh, residential school. So we've got gossiping. I was going to say I see gossiping instead of facing the issue. Yeah. 
I, ooh, say that. Tell, tell me more about that. It's uh, affirming isolation. They're affirming their isolation, right? They're to each other. Some of them are. Yeah. Some of the groups are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. Suspicion, distrust. Suspicion, distrust. Yeah, really look at their faces. Got biz- Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Who has the most power in the room? From your perspective. Yeah. And feel free to walk around because from a different perspective, you might see something different. Yeah. Choosing to pull. Ah, those choosing to pull away have the most power. That was going to, I was going to say, who are you most concerned by was going to be one of my next questions. Yes. Yep. What, I, what about these folks? They don't care. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Lovely. All right. Um, I'm going to come around just a tiny little bit uh, super quickly. We are moving towards 1230 if you need to leave, but I, we're still in the magic, so stay. I'm going to come to a few people. If you can describe in one word what's an emotion you are feeling, one word in your character as you are, an emotion you are feeling. Everything's all right. Everything's all right. Nice. Yeah. For word, phrase. Yeah. Protective. Frustrated. Threatened. Whatever. Nobody's listening. Unresolved. Exasperated. <laughs> Clinical. Mm. <laughs> Unconcerned. Unengaged. Do we, I think I came to everybody. Do you hear the diversity of words there as well? Even though we have, we've said that there are people who seem like they are in cliques or groups, there is a difference between... Can you give me your word again? Unconcerned. Unengaged. Unconcerned and unengaged can have similarities, but can mean the world of difference. We could ask deeper questions in this moment. Tell me more about that, okay? This is an opportunity for, that you can use with a team, with a group of people, and you can come to them and say, tell me more about what is driving that unconcerned or that unengaged. Tell me more about, give me your phrase again. Everything's okay. There's no problem here. We're going to work it out. There's nothing wrong. Calm down. <laughs> and if I uh, took you for, and I'm your trusted confidant, and we're maybe having a drink of, wait, were you tea or coffee? I can't remember. We're screwed. Right. <laughs> There's some subtext there. We've got what he's saying. And what I really feel. Well, what he really feels. Okay, lovely. Thank you. We're going to do a little reflection on this in a moment. I'd love to see the town hall meeting group. Okay, thank you, Lisa. I think they can do it with Henry. Excellent. Let's see this. We'll come in audience. Find a perspective to look at it. I'd love to come hear what you're thinking in a moment. Uh, you can jump right into your scene whenever. <laughs> All right. Um, feel free to stand where you are. Walk around if you'd like to get a different perspective. This is another key facilitation tool when running this work. What perspective shifts from what you notice as you go from place to place. Anybody who'd like to pull out what you notice? What are you noticing? Um, the antagonistic ones here. <laughs> it was making a point and he's uh, um, making it worse by taking a photo and laughing. <laughs> it's just making the fight continue. Yeah. Uh, what else do we notice? Anybody notice anything else? Something is too much. Something is too much. Yeah. yeah. I'm too much. We've got face, hands there. Does it seem aggressive or not too much? It, it feels angry that it's too much. Yeah. yeah. And one last thing that we notice. Yeah, I'm going to come over. We have a whole subset of people who have just given up. They're just like, yeah. you know, on the phone, rolling the eyes and just like. All right, I'm going to come into our performers, into our actors. I'd love to hear one word or phrase that describes how you're feeling. Anger. Disbelief. 
Unimpressed. Above it. <laughs> Bored. Bored. Mm. <laughs> All right. And uh, lovely. Thank you. Let's, let's come back into a circle. Deborah, I'd love to come to you. You were taking some notes. Uh, can you tell me what drew you to taking notes and what kind of notes you were taking there? Sure. Um, I tried to draw the actual uh, dynamic um, and what you guys were capturing. Um, I, I'm, I've been trained in social presencing theater. I don't know if that's something you're familiar with, but it's well, you, you make the constellation. It's, it's almost exactly the same thing. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to know because intuitively as human beings, we often do pick up on a vibe and I wanted to pick up on maybe vibes because as the consultant on this, it's almost like they've run out of runway and something opened up and it's like, will we be able to explore this in a way that's really helpful? And I want to see if there's anything there that I could, um, obviously there's all of it was there, um, to see what else, what's going on underneath. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and just to get a sense of what, what the way I described it, because on some level, in a very quick way, you're hearing my very quick take on it, and then you're translating it within your bodies of how it feels, and that's just a really good picture for me to see. Again, because it's hard for me to see the whole thing as the single consultant, I should say, on this particular situation. Yeah. Is there anything else anyone discovered or noticed that they'd like to bring into the circle whilst we were embodying... A situation yeah it seems that one behavior fuels another so disinterest boredom disgust you know laughter fuels increased anger frustration it's a cycle yeah yeah related feeding each other that these independent thoughts can be connected uh, and then also not necessarily connected to what's happening in that room. It could be something outside of the world. We were all experiencing COVID, but we weren't all experiencing it the same way, you know. Um, uh, Boal likes to say that theatre can help us build our future rather than waiting for it. That's what I think we sometimes do when we bring these opportunities to... Uh, uncover the conflict moment by just creating a still picture. A step up from this is forum theatre, which we didn't have time to dig in today, into today, but that's when a prepared scene, might only be 10 lines of dialogue or say, is presented to a group of people. So we take that still image and we animate it somewhat. Who's saying what to who? Who's saying what to who? Because of this, now how does that person feel we go through beginning, middle, and end of a story with some kind of conflict, and then how does it resolve? We see it once, and the oppressed continue to be oppressed. Everything is still uncut, not, it's all covered up. And then you invite the audience to say, how do we make a change? What can we do? And that's what the next step of any of those still pictures could have been as well. How could we have changed those images? Is there anything that you can think of in either group that might have created a spark for possibility or opportunity? Oh, um, I think, you know, a lot in um, things that I, that I work in, there's always sort of a, a way of behavior, kind of the way um, you kind of agree to... Um, the way you're going to be in this meeting or you're going to be together in this meeting. Listening respectfully, um, listening completely, um, uh, you know, and if someone is, feels maybe insulted or hurt, you can say flag. You know, just things that make the communication a lot more even and safer. I think, um, I don't know how it would work in a town hall. I've only done this in, in educational situations, but um, you know, I think I think having that expectation of each other is a really safe environment. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, doing this work in, in a town hall setting is really fun. And I'd love to talk to you more about that um, over lunch, which we're almost at. Um, I'm going to stick around. It's been lovely to work with you all this morning. Thank you for being willing and jumping in and opening and opening yourself up to being in the room with one another. That's huge. Um, if anything stuck with you, resonating, um, come and tell me about it. Tell someone else at the conference. You can find me in the uh, conference app, um, and but you won't find me on any social media. I'm a real uh, real world kind of gal. So um, yeah, but I'd love to connect and talk more about this work and how, if it's new to you, what how what it sparked and and how you can bring it into your practice. If it's a refresher of something, I'd love to talk about how we can grow our practice together. Um, but Boal also said that theatre is not revolutionary, but it's a great rehearsal for revolution. And that's what I think we're doing here when we can dig into these sticky moments with communities, whatever community we were working in, and unco uncover the conflict. And as you said, call it out. Just say the thing. Just say it. Um, I'd love to go around the circle one last time. Something you're grateful for, either out of this session or the conference as a whole. Some kind of gratitude that you're leaving with that's going to spark you into the future. And then we'll close our circle. So I'm going to start a little bit of gratitude, then I'll, I'll come around this way. Um, I'm just grateful for our innate ability to play as human beings. I'm grateful for some of the ideas that I've seen that have sparked things for me, and then I, I'm excited that I can't wait to get back home and dig into them to research them a little bit more and think about how we could adapt them to the programs I'm involved with. I'm grateful for the, uh, the energy and vibe that we've created together. And also personally, thank you just because you've helped me with my work. <laughs> I'm grateful that, that theater actually reminds us that we can bring it back to real life and, and find answers. It's really, really fun. Thank you. Uh, I'm grateful for like, you know, why everybody's here and it's sort of like we have a community, even though was, some of us is spread across the country and Canada. Um, so that's, that's what I'm grateful for, the connection. So much to be appreciative of, but most especially from yesterday's uh, with um, Springboard, that there's a model of, 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 of um, getting the financial resource to make m powerful things happen I, I've not seen that before, and to know that that's possible gives me such great hope. I, I missed that part of the presentation. Um, I'm grateful for everybody's openness and presence here and uh, welcomingness. Is that a thing? Ness? I'm grateful to have a reinforcement uh, that the arts can be an integral part of positive change, positive impact. Uh, I'm grateful to learn from everyone at the conference in some way or another, either just like learning about the cool work you're doing or just your insights or thoughts about a specific thing. That's always like my favorite part of coming to things like this. I'm grateful for the deepening of relationships with the folks that uh, that I've brought in and the ability to share both their wonderfulness and our community with, with all of you guys. Hello, I am Nina. And I'm grateful for um, the ideas and resources that I may be able to use in my future, like Deborah. I am grateful for multiple perspectives and for uh, I don't know exactly what the word is, but uh, yeah, being a group of openness where we can connect dots and shift perspectives through each other. I'm grateful for having a reinvigorated hope from this whole conference. That is something that I was going to be grateful for, too. Um, <laughs> I think 
coming here and being surrounded by so many people that care so much about so many different things, but we all can come together and connect on like one thing, which is like community. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, I'm grateful for the ability to change and grow um, and hope that it continues forever. Uh, I'm grateful for the space and time to think. I'm grateful and reassured there are so many people who want to come together and grow together, learning new techniques and, and uh, joining forces to change the world. <laughs> Um, I'm grateful for all the inspiration I got, uh, that we're able to share this amazing community with people outside of the King community, um, and for that really good <laughs> maple cotton candy at Connect last night. Poondog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Poondog. Poondog. I'll add that to mine. I'm grateful for being here and everybody else being here and choosing um, the art track and believing that art can make a difference in the community. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> <laughs>